And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Lurdosaurus, which was a request from PaleoMike716 via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. Lurdosaurus was an iguanodont that lived in the early Cretaceous in what is now Niger in the Elraz Formation. It looked similar to Iguanodon, but it was bigger. It was so massive, in fact, it was probably quadrupedal. Had oh, to walk on four legs. We're getting into the Wuriguanodontians quadrupedal territory here. Yes. <laughs> At least some of them. It was estimated to be about 23 to 30 feet or 7 to 9 meters long and about six and a half feet or two meters tall when it was walking on all fours, but its stomach would only have been a little over two feet or 70 centimeters <sighs> above the ground, and that's based on the length of the ribs. Lurdosaurus also weighed about five and a half tons. Ooh, that's pretty heavy. Yeah, although in 2016, Gregory Paul suggested Lurdosaurus was about 23 feet or seven meters long and weighed two and a half tons. Still pretty large. Went on a diet, <laughs> lost half its weight. <laughs> <laughs> In 2005, Yo Hailu and others said that Lurdosaurus was classified in a group, quote, distinguished by their massively constructed body forms, end quote. <laughs> That's an interesting way to phrase it as it stood out because it was really big. Yes. Well, <laughs> average adult hadrosaurids are about 7 to 12 meters long and 3,000 kilograms. Oh, so that, if you go by the Gregory Paul estimate, that's pretty much normal, maybe even on the smaller side. Yeah, but if you go by the other estimate, it's much larger. Yeah. Well, maybe not much larger, but larger. Tekka and Russell, who officially named Lurdosaurus, described Lurdosaurus as ponderous or very heavy. They said that in a squat posture, Lurdosaurus, quote, must have somewhat resembled ankylosaurus, end quote. I guess that's a good point because we're talking mostly about the weight estimate, mm -hmm. which is what I usually promote in terms of what's bigger because this thing seems to have such a bulky chest that unless it was all just air in there, then that's a lot of mass. Mm -hmm. So even though the length estimate is sort of the same as the general hadrosaurid, it seems like it was quite a bit heavier potentially. Being all ponderous and whatnot. <laughs> that was the first time I'd heard that word or read that word. Hmm. However, they also said that its small skull, circular chest, powerful forelimbs and claws, and other elements, quote, probably even more strikingly recalled the form of giant ground sloths, end quote. Oh, that's a good comparison, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a type of animal that very few people know about, because you think of sloths as the things that are all slow in the trees. Yeah. Not these massive, basically, bears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, not your typical iguanodontid. It's large, so large it walked on four legs. It had a relatively small skull, long neck, massive forelimbs and thumb spikes, a bulky body, a relatively short tail, and hind limbs. It sounds like this one is uncontroversially four-legged, too, quadrupedal. Yeah, I think so. Because if it has that much of a bulky torso, it's going to shift its center of mass forward really far. And then if it has big old forearms mm -hmm. or arms to match it, it's probably walking on them. Yes. Yeah, it had large, stout limbs. And the forelimbs were about 60% the size of the hind limbs. Hmm. They estimated that the length of the skull of the holotype was about 2.9 feet or roughly 83 centimeters long. And it had a beak. The back of the skull was about 30 centimeters wide and the front was 20 centimeters. So it did not have a duck-like bill. It, it narrowed there. Yeah, because that's a foot wide mm. at the back of the head and about eight inches at the front of the head. I don't remember seeing that sort of taper, but considering the head is three feet long, mm -hmm. that four inch difference over three feet doesn't probably doesn't stand out to the eye that much. Yeah. Lurdosaurus also had between 12 and 14 neck vertebrae, and its neck is estimated to be 5.3 feet or 1.6 meters long. And the tail was about 13 feet or four meters long. <laughs> I don't remember the last time we talked about the neck length of something that's not a sauropod, mm -hmm. but a five foot neck, yeah. and just like a typical hadrosaur. This is a large dinosaur. <laughs> it's just crazy to think about a five foot neck on a hadrosaur. <laughs> well, it also had a short, powerful pelvis somewhat similar to ceratopsians. So we got ankylosaurs, ceratopsians, and giant ground sloths <laughs> in the mix here for comparing. <laughs> oh, and the femur had features like ceratopsians and sauropods. Makes sense if it's so heavy, the sauropods that get thrown in the mix too. Yeah. The wrist bones were fused into a block and it had a large thumb spike. Taquette and Russell described the wrist and thumb claw as, quote, reminiscent of a mace and chain, end quote. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, so it probably used its thumb spike for defense. They also found that the bones in the foot were reduced, so the metatarsals, the bones leading up to the toes, quote, lost contact with each other and that a fleshy pad must have supported most of the weight borne by the foot, end quote. Which, we talk about that with sauropods, too. Yep, yeah, we have, I think, seen some tracks and some indications that that was probably the case, and we know it's the case with pretty much every heavy mammal now, like... Mm -hmm. For example, elephants, most obviously, their foot is buried in a big old sea of fleshy, fatty pads. Yeah. <laughs> in 2007, Tom Holt suggested that Lurdosaurus acted like a hippo and was semi-aquatic. But I think he only suggested this. There's no studies around this. Why, Tom? <laughs> why? <laughs> I wonder why he would say that. Well, like a hippo. Lurdosaurus was stocky and usually moved slow, but could move fast when needed. Okay. If that's the only, although you said he said it was semi-aquatic. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's hard to say. It's but very hard to say. This suggestion could be why there's paleo art of Lurdosaurus swimming. There's a lot if you Google it and it's only got its head above water. Very hippo-like that way. That's really interesting because we think sauropods, their chests were like, largely air filled and if it had a huge chest it'd be like trying to force a barrel underwater that's mostly full of air mm -hmm. like it's it would have a lot more than just its head above the water if it was swimming for sure <laughs> <laughs> now the type species of lurdosaurus is lurdosaurus arenatus the fossils were found in 1965 by philippe taquette the holotype is a nearly complete adult specimen with a fragmentary skull. It's only missing part of the skull, the sacrum, and a lot of the foot. So, yes, very nearly complete. They found tooth punctures around the pubic bones that were partly rehealed. Taquette said that it was large, and in 1976, in a brief description, said that this dinosaur should probably be its own genus. And then in 1988... Chobley described the specimen for her thesis and named it, in quotes, Gravisaurus tenorensis, but her thesis wasn't published, that's why the name's in quotes, and then it was formally named as Lurdosaurus in 1999 by Taquette and Dale Russell. They also referred a fragment of a dentary, the lower jaw, and right coracoid, part of the shoulder, to Lurdosaurus. The genus name, Lurdosaurus, means heavy lizard, and the species name, Arenatus means sandy and refers to the fossils being found in a desert. Lurdosaurus lived in a tropical forest, though. But, you know, habitats change over millions and millions of years. <laughs> now it's a desert. Yep. Uh, other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place include iguanodonts, like Oranosaurus, Titanosaurs, the Spinosaurid Suchomimus, the Carcharodontosaurid, Eocarcaria, the Abelosaurid Cryptops, and Noasaurids. And other animals that lived around the same time and place include crocodilomorphs and pterosaurs. That's a really cool dinosaur. Mm-hmm. A super bulky iguanodontian. I wonder, I don't think I've ever heard of Lerdu. Well, I, I did know that it was pronounced Lerdusaurus, but I didn't really know anything about it other than that there is a dinosaur named Lerdusaurus. <laughs> now you know it's massive and had big thumb claws. Yeah. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.